Welcome back to another episode of This Film Not Rated, a branch of the Drive-In Podcast Network. Just like always, we are on our mission to prove that you can be objective uh, when it comes to talking about film and rating film. Very uh, sincere mission. Very sincere mission. As we continue on our quest, going through the new films of the week and putting each of us through a gauntlet where we ask the other one a series of questions and if they answer any of them with any kind of uh, subjective viewpoints, they are buzzed out and we just go into talking about the film as normal people would. This is a spoiler-filled podcast uh, for those uh, who are new, so you have been warned. It's very important to say right up top. <laughs> people get mad when, when, when you don't, because then they claim they've been uh, blindsided by the review. No, for this movie, it is very important to say right up top Yes, I, I... <laughs> that we are going to be talking full spoilers yeah. Very important people who haven't watched the movie. <laughs> With that said, what movie are we talking about today? The sequel to that one, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Miles Morales has been making his way, improving as Spider Man, and he encounters someone who was the victim of the explosion. Uh, he encounters someone who it seems like a villain of the week, but could be his nemesis. Uh, someone with your traditional 1989 Batman, 2002 Spider-Man, I created you, you created me, except for Spider-Man didn't create the Green Goblin and Green Goblin didn't create Spider-Man, so whatever. Mm-hmm. Point is, you <clears throat> have this threat, this multidimensional threat, bring Spider-Man 2099, Miguel O'Hara, voiced by Oscar Isaac, into the mix, pulling together Spider-Man from across the Spider-Verse to contain anomalies and threats that threaten to break apart multi-dimensions and destroy timelines and entire universes. It's very end-of-the-world stuff that is then condensed and contained down to the consequences it has for individuals. So, how ready are you for the gauntlet? I'm extremely prepared. first one which is always the first one is across the spider-verse a good movie or a bad movie across the spider-verse is a collage of art that is showcasing a story that is familiar to an extent and given that story that audiences know of a hero facing off with a villain or a team that feels like they're doing something for the greater good they find out there's some moral gray area in and there's one hero you know it's a story that you've seen before and that story resonated with audiences with civil war i see Mm -hmm. no reason for it to not resonate with audiences now. Uh, Who's the best actor in the movie? That is a difficult question to answer. Mm Mm-hmm. I have to say, Haley Steinfeld... Steinfeld? Haley Steinfeld. She had to make an entire movie arc work in just two scenes. (laughs) Yeah, I left my dad. I came back to my dad. She had to make it work just on those two mm-hmm. beats. So if that resonated with you, if that resonated with audiences, the way that it resonated with me, then I would argue that it that would be the most powerful performance. What should be cut from the movie? Nothing. 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 Not a frame. I'm really tempted, but I believe... I want to say that would be pretty subjective, but... Yeah? But I, I, I can't in good conscience buzz you out on that one. You're buzzing yourself out? 
Yeah. Okay. This movie was like gutturally moving for what it was. You know, it's yeah. it's not like it's saying too many things that are new. No. But key I'm just gonna say right off the top, key to Miles Morales' story that and, and Gwen and I don't even remember which version of Spider Man they're referring to when they talk about this. Maybe it was Miguel but there's never a point where it's too late to turn things around and start moving in the right direction. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 that was a very strongly delivered point that's been delivered in other things before, but hit really hard by playing off of the entirety of the canon of Spider-Man from comics to Legos to video games to... to uh, movies to live action movies to animated tv shows to everything that you can possibly imagine S cycled through to kind of speak to a larger overall beat of like spider-man's unique hero's journey and there's just a lot going on for for me it's like right from the start this is this movie's are is like already doing something slightly different from uh from in from what in in, in, in into the spider-verse does where it's it's playing with the backgrounds and it's using the the, the environment and art style to help convey uh certain emotional uh moments in, in in the movie like you see at the very beginning with uh gwen stacy when she's having a semi-heartfelt talk with 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 with, with her dad about the nature of uh spider woman and, and what she's playing as the her background and her color scheme turned blue while everything else around is like deeply contrasting with these bright colors singling her out as the sole lonely person yeah there are there are commonalities to the character design mm -hmm. across multiple different uh whatever you call it you know like they, they, they draw eyes and facial features the same in every world yeah but the medium used for example for gwen is more watercolors and the rules for mm. her and how she interacts with the world are different in in that a lot of times her reflection matches her emotions she'll see herself as spider-man but she's actually not dressed as spider-man that mm -hmm. doesn't really happen with the others as much yeah. um miles seems to have the most sort of grounded straight one-to-one -one like live action turned into animation, but the rules of the real world still apply kind of thing. Yeah. But mm -hmm. only so much that it, it, it doesn't keep it from using the strengths of animation to pull off wild things that you can see, you know, spider woman pregnant on a motorcycle. Like she came in and she was just <laughs> yeah. so definitely spider woman. And she absolutely owned the mm -hmm. her her day in the sun, as like I am I am a hero and I represent Spider Man and I am, like, put that next to Peter Parker and tell me those are the same character. Until watching this, you know, I I wouldn't believe you can go that far, but you can go that far. You know, they really deliver mm -hmm. on the message that anyone and everyone can be Spider Man, which is you know something that was important for Stan Lee. You know, like it's. And then Miguel O'Hara plays the most, uh, dis uh, like different Spider-Man out of all of them. Uh, Oscar Isaac gives this real like uh, brooding and and melancholic, almost angry pr 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 performance where like every other, uh, 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 where every other Spider-Man like like they have like they all have like an edge of seriousness to them, but for the most part they're all joking and and just like having fun while 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 they're doing their uh, stuff even Spider-Woman on 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 the motorcycle like she still has like like free will spirit to her well with but with Miguel O'Hara he's just so beaten down by the idea that uh no matter what he does he can never be happy and it's like it's he's taken on this burden that it's unsure whether or not he's ready to or should take on but it's beaten him down and has made him jaded to a point where it's it's easy to see his side and where he's coming from and what he's trying to do. It's 
at the expense of like what what at the core of Spider-Man is supposed to be and going against that where Spider-Man is the guy who's supposed to try and save everyone and here he is saying well well no we can't because if we do something might go wrong and we could never exist and it's this whole moral conundrum that you brought up earlier it's so weird that this this movie is 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 almost a paradox in the sense that it shows you everything new and nothing new. Mm-hmm. It it shows you just how 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 much has already been done to death, and then freshens it up and makes everything feel earned and unique to the movie and like all that kind of stuff. Like yeah. Miguel O'Hara has the annoying um, like hypocrisy trait of of a lot of villains, where it's like. Well, I destroyed a universe, and so you don't understand why I'm now in the right doing the right thing and, like, defending Mm -hmm. and guard. You know, it's like Thanos. Thanos' world screwed up, and he lost his world, and so then he goes around destroying half of the universe because it's the greater good, and then the people who he does that to thrive afterwards. Yeah, he he, he overcorrects for a a, a societal blight that he perceived himself as being a, a, a able to fix and takes it on a grand scale. Yeah. And then we also just had Dr. Strange talking about, we got to send those villains back. Yes, they're going to die, but the greater threat is, you know, the, that the entire universe will fall apart. And so it's, it's the exact same thing. Yeah. Nothing original and yet completely original. Mm-hmm. Probably the only thing that, that, I found a, a, a little bit jarring in in this movie is is cutting in the live action sequences like like when 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 Spot goes to Venom's universe and and talks to the lady behind the counter, or uh, when uh, when you see Andrew Garfield in hologram form and it, it's uh, while 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 Miguel O'Hara is talking about uh, the consequences of breaking canon or just even like I, I I like this cameo but like even down but like even Donald Glover as the Prowler in in the station and. I don't know what it is, but seeing the live action and, and, and the animation together, it was a little bit jarring. It, it's, it's, I, I, I got some, uh, yeah. some Space Jam Legacy flashbacks. But you made the mistake of watching that movie. Uh, I did not. And I, I, I feel like as jarring as it is to see someone that basically looks like they're made of paper, like Spider-Punk or the Vulture, mm-hmm. next to, like almost rounded 3d models yeah is a similar leap to seeing the 3d models next to live action Uh, i'm really looking forward to going to spider punk's like universe like i feel like he's not gone and it completely makes sense that he quit yeah and i can't wait to go find out what we're gonna do more with him that's daniel kaluuya and he's an incredible he doesn't sound like himself at all no, like I like Spider Punk's whole vibe just made me think of 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 the Sex Pistols and and like Randy's set or not 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 Randy. What's his uh the guy the the character that Gary Old, Oldman played in in Sid and Nancy Sid Vicious Randy Savage. I was about to say Rand Randy Savage, but Sid Vicious vibes. Sid Vicious. He gave me like yeah, Sid yeah, yeah. yeah, like 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 that whole UK and and Antarctic <laughs> punk. Fuck you! I'm gonna do what I want. So the, 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 there's this heat, there's this this riling up of the story of Miles standing at odds against the entire Spider-Verse because he is the original anomaly that set off all of these problems. He's the Spider-Man that's not supposed to exist, which yeah. is, it's an incredible idea that really pays off um, the fact that the spider was a multidimensional creature that bit him in, in the original movie. Um, cause he doesn't just live in the ultimate universe, even though like a lot of his models are like, this is clearly something, whatever point is right. he stands against everybody and escapes and he escapes where he thinks is home. Yeah. But it's so perfectly set up that his DNA is from the original universe where the spider is from the spider right. that was supposed to create Spider-Man that got displaced so he goes to a world where there's no Spider-Man, mm-hmm. and, and you you don't you find out these things are happening parallel. They're hunting him down in his own universe, and he's there, mm-hmm. and then he's not. And I like, oh, like it's so sinister. At first, his mom is oh, just yeah. talking about like there is no Spider-Man. 
yeah she's like there there is no spider-man and i'm like i'm like oh she she's so busy she doesn't even know there's a spider-man like she doesn't care (laughs) she doesn't pay attention to anything but then there's this creeping music happening and gwen is going near his room and watching and there's this creeping music happening and then he's walking in and there's something wrong like really wrong and then you realize Mm -hmm. he's not spider-man what like (laughs) <laughs> that was it was the most impactful twist that's happened in a movie to me in a long time. Yeah. And it brings up this whole like it, it, it this, this whole thing that 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 touches that is like lightly touched upon throughout the film but like there's this whole like nature versus nur- versus nurture vibe and like what could have been if things had been slightly different and like is it the environment that made Miles who who he was and if and if one small change like his dad dying was able to make such a drastic uh, moral leap in in character. Yeah, I mean, I I feel like we know that he was leaning the direction of his uncle and wanting to be like him and with him in yeah. the first movie. Yeah, I think all all it would take is his dad to die, to be like, I'm angry at the world and like fall into all of that stuff. Like it mm-hmm. it. And I think it's it's key that he pointed out, like, your dad's alive. Like, that's something that he's so bitter about. And, like, it feels so, like... Yeah. But the thing is, that's a very unpowered dude. That's just yeah. Miles Morales. And to <laughs> see him, like, charging up and spiking the thing, knowing that, like, he's the kind of Spider-Man that technically has to pull all his punches because he could go, like, this to Miles Morales' face and snap his neck. <laughs> yeah. And then it it ends. The movie just teases ends. like it's moving towards an ending, and then we don't get there. Yeah, no, like I, I, so I was talking with with my brother Nick about this, and and saying I I, I was getting re, re, Return of the King flashbacks because like every five minutes after the initial oh it looks like it's about to end where's credits oh it's still going oh it's still going. Why is it still going? Oh, that's why it's still going. And then ends. I cannot wait for the sequel. I can't wait to rewatch this movie a hundred times. Just to just to soak in the movement. Like. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, and, it, 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 really, it, it really does. This movie shows off a very dangerous sort of red flag warning sign. That mm-hmm. we are at the end of align when it comes to superhero stories and what messages people have to say it feels like a fireworks displays finale is kicking yeah. off where like oh, guardians sure, of the sure. galaxy felt so final and felt so original and now uh-huh. this movie brings back like a highlight of what's so great about superhero movies and just kind of makes you realize none of it's original but it's so showy and it's such a strong worthwhile its own amazing thing that probably stands up with the best of superhero movies period Mm -hmm. that it's it's this big bombastic explosion but i'm really worried that that is kind of the beginning of the end yeah because i'm starting to think like like, what are you gonna do for tom holland's spider-man 4 i don't know they they've they've is he gonna fight craven the hunter I don't know. Who cares? They, 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 anymore. Yeah. Yeah, as, as long as you have enough, like, 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 as, as long as there's something worthwhile to tell, like, something's gonna, re, re, is, is gonna resonate with, with someone. And these, these, these movies in, in particular. Thing. Sure. Because, like, the first across, uh, the, the, the first Spider-Verse in, in, into the Spider-Verse was, was kind of like a risky jump, uh, Almost, it was this new IP to a film that no one has 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 seen before. You have this drastic new animation style that you have no idea people are gonna like. That they have no idea if people are gonna like like or not, and it winds up being a a huge success, a cultural land a a, a cultural landmark. And then they are able to continue the story along, and you have this this new one that that starts off with a little bit of hope and ends in this like dark place, and leads to. And and, and and leads you on a cliff, 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 uh, cliffhanger on what's to come. Like, it is so much like how Star Wars got started. It's 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 ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Like this this has almost like the Absolutely. same emotional ending and weight that Empire Strikes Back has. 
And like the the Where connection. All you want to do is just keep going and see them come back on be on top and answer yeah. questions and yeah. Oh, there, there are... and it's not because there's mm-hmm. mysteries. There's right. no mystery. There's just tension and stakes. Like mm-hmm. yeah, there are so many one to one point comparisons that that you can make right now with the Spider Verse movies to the Star Wars trilogy, the original one. It, it's 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 uncanny. It, it and I, I'm I'm just. I can't wait for Beyond Spider-Verse to come out. The last time I was this excited to see the continuation of something else was when I was waiting for Endgame to come out after seeing Infinity War. Like, that kind of tension. Yeah, which is which is already... Infinity War was five years ago. It came <laughs> out the same year as Into the Spider-Verse. Uh-huh. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> and, you're right, you're right. And you know what? Th- this is bigger to me. This is bigger than wanting to know, like... Well, now, how, like, because in the, in the end, there's sort of this, always this wink, wink, like, oh, yeah, they're going to kill off Spider-Man. No more Spider-Man stories. Right. Like, like, no, they're not. Like, there's a clearly an ending here. We know they're going to come to a head, and I want to see how that is resolved. Mm-hmm. But here, there's the excitement of, and this is why Star Wars is such a more apt comparison, but there's infinite imagination and worlds to explore. The ways that they can resolve these things are infinite Mm -hmm. and and boundless in imagination. Once again, we are This Film Not Rated, a branch of the Drive-In Podcast Network. Uh, Be sure to check out that website where you can find a bunch of other podcasts to uh, talk about. But in the meantime, I am Curtis. You can find me at TalkAnimeGA on Twitter. I'm Eric. You can find me at High Contrast FLM on Twitter. And we are This Film Not Rated. You can find us at TFNR. TFNR. CMEL. And we hope that we see you and that you guys talk to us and let us know, you know, what you're looking forward to see. But uh, absolutely go see this because it is spectacular, amazing, you know, all kinds of things.